we live just outside of the city, so we, we heat our house with wood. We kind of have a necessity to go out and get, get wood to do that. So it's a, kind of a big family affair. I remember there, there being one Friday, uh, I had a bit of a fever and just kind of achy. Just thinking the whole time I just had a cold. My health just continued to disintegrate. It wasn't really evident what, what was the root cause of my sickness at that time. I started developing a rash. I was thinking maybe with being in the bush as much as I was that I might have had Lyme. Lyme disease is exponentially increasing every year. The risk of Lyme disease in Lunabird County is higher than any other area in Canada. As a frontline family doctor, often people are coming in usually about once a day. Um, I'll see somebody who comes in with concerns, either with a, a, a tick that's latched, they need help removing it. Most commonly we'll see the bullseye rash. It's a flat, red, expanding rash that's specific to the disease. In the minority of cases, we'll have patients come in with symptoms and signs that can often mimic other illnesses, headache, um, fatigue, malaise, fevers, chills. And the diagnosis in that case can be quite challenging. So we went to the hospital and they started doing diagnostics to try and figure out what was going on. The emergency doctor at the time prescribed some really strong antibiotics and uh, within a couple days after taking that, I started to feel better. We are seeing northward spread of the tick into Canada and a warming climate has had an impact on that spread. We see a, a, essentially an epidemic of Lyme disease in Canada and in North America that is driven in part by a warming climate that has allowed these ticks to invade into new environments. I had a front row seat to the emergence of the black-legged ticks. It really started to expand and, and now we see multiple populations in, in Nova Scotia, in New Brunswick, through southern uh, Quebec and in Ottawa area into northwestern Ontario and in Manitoba. These ticks have moved right across the province. They're banging at the door in Saskatchewan. For people in the prairies, we're very used to the wood tick or American dog tick. And an easy way to tell those apart is American dog ticks have white markings on their back. black legged ticks do not. We want to have surveillance in place, going out and collecting ticks and then testing them. You want to make sure that you're safe. It's important to do surveillance because not only will we get information on where the ticks are, when they are active, what type of environment and conditions are better, then we can map this and have more accurate risk maps. Find areas where the ticks may not be now, but the conditions are suitable so that you can say, this is a place we need to watch. I think there's a lot of fear because it's something that's relatively new. Now when you go outdoors and do recreation or you work outdoors, there's this risk of being bitten by a tick. And they're small, they feed on your blood, and it's just a, there's a nick factor and there's also a fear factor. It's good to have that awareness so we're not as big of a victim to the impacts as the climate change happens. There's many things that can be done to reduce the risk incorporate into the daily routine, just like brushing your teeth, a daily tick check if you've been outdoors. If you catch that tick early, if you see it within 24 hours, your risk of getting Lyme disease is quite low. If you're wearing long sleeve shirts and long trousers and tuck your trousers into your socks, then the risk of, of a tick being able to attach to you is much reduced. DEET or Icaridin containing insect repellents, those also repel ticks as well. I think it's important to still go outside. You just need to adapt your behavior, protect yourself, be aware of the risks. The ticks are not going away. Climate change is, is a reality for us. We're seeing it and we're seeing the effects of it for the health of Canadians. I still 
deal with a lot of fatigue. I'm really expecting a full recovery. You know, there's still a little ways to go. I'm gonna be a little more cautious and protect myself and my family better and, and just try to carry on from there.